body is found on a lake bottom. The queen visits, and three federal agents die in a car crash. Fingers point to the ex-sheriff. He makes people tremble. He told Tom Gerald, I can't believe that you would bring up such stupid accusations. Absolutely a lie. Focus, focus. Locus pocus, no such thing ever happened. Something bizarre. The law of Sheriff Page. Those stories tonight, November 15, 1991. Tonight, a twisted version of law and order in the Old West, where law-abiding citizens live in fear and sleep with guns near their pillows. What are they afraid of? An ex-lawman who casts a giant shadow over Mariposa County, California. One always assumes that the people in the sheriff's office are the good guys, but in Mariposa, they have their doubts. And when efforts were made to blow the whistle, they fell on deaf ears. Tom Jell reports that it's in this lovely setting that some people feel threatened by the law of Sheriff Page. There are few places in the world as beautiful as Mariposa County, California. The melting snow from the mountains and glaciers of Yosemite National Park creates spectacular waterfalls that tumble thousands of feet to join the Merced River. Downstream, about 40 miles, is the town of Mariposa. It's an old gold miner's town with an image today tarnished by reports of local crime and corruption. This woman in 1982 says she was handcuffed to her bed and raped. These divers are recovering the body of a sheriff's deputy who vanished under mysterious circumstances 11 years ago. A bomb and automatic weapons were allegedly found in the trunk of a county patrol car that was to provide security for the Queen of England. And this undercover narcotics investigator says he found evidence the Mariposa County Airport was a closely guarded major distribution point for drug smugglers. The old Wild West with outlaws? Yes. But all these accusations can be traced directly to the doorstep of the Mariposa County Sheriff's Department. There is no corruption. See, there's, there's no that... corruption in the Sheriff's Department. None. Clean department. Meet former Mariposa County Sheriff Paul Page, known to many around the county as the Boss Hog. One of the new legendary figures in the county, Page ran things around here for eight years. How, with the department that you grew up with, how did it get this reputation for corruption? I don't know that it does have a reputation for corruption. Who said that? When Page joined the Sheriff's Department, it had three men. When he left, it had grown to 35 deputies. Even though he's been retired for more than eight years, many think that even as he sits on his front porch swing, the top deputies he put in uniform still follow his orders. The boss hog was voted out when allegations of corruption became more than the voters could stand. His problems began with the mysterious death of a deputy on Lake McClure in 1980. An accidental drowning, the sheriff's office claimed. In the Mariposa community, at first, most people accepted the official finding. Deputy Sheriff Ron Van Meter had drowned in a simple boating accident. But some deputies, close friends, family, and investigators immediately were suspicious. They knew Van Meter, who was a strong swimmer, was in hot water at the sheriff's office. Did Deputy Van Meter go to the state attorney general's office to no. complain about corruption? No. That's another part. A number of people who knew him before he died said that he had told them no. he had gone there and had returned. No, you, you haven't. You, you I don't think you've interviewed anybody that knew him before he died that would make that statement. So Lucky Jordan, a reserve deputy who patrolled with Van Meter, says Van Meter slipped away on his day off to go to the state attorney general's office to complain about a drug and pornography ring operating within the sheriff's department. Jordan says the sheriff was waiting when Van Meter returned. And uh, Page said, well, I'll tell you where you were. You were up at the inspector general's office, and you said this and this and this. Get your butt down here to the office. I want to talk to you. Sheriff Page ran the overall investigation of Van Meter's death through Sergeant Rod Sinclair, a top deputy and his right-hand man. Sergeant Dave Beavers, who headed the dive team searching for Deputy Van Meter, wanted all the help he could get. Was help offered from outside the county, additional divers? Yes, uh, Madera offered help, uh, Merced offered help. I got a call from a good friend of mine who uh, had a dive shop in Fresno who had a mini-sub. He had it loaded on the truck and was ready to come up. 
So you could have had a massive search. That's correct. Well, what happened? Page says absolutely not. The sheriff I don't want said, anybody. Yeah, that's right. Sure. Is it true or false that at the search scene run by one of your deputies, uh, Mr. Sinclair, help, additional help, divers that might have found this man's body sooner were turned down nope. by you? Nope. From the next county? They nope. offered numerous divers, even a small submarine, to come over and no, no small help submarine. the search? The divers all came over from Merced County, and they all died for him. You know, maybe in his mind, three divers is a enough to fill that lake but uh if that's the case i think you better review him but three is what you three. saw there that's right must have been a depressing and uh, a sad scene for a fellow officer to have drowned what was it like well it's very depressing uh, especially since there's a couple of us who are really trying to do something and all of a sudden it's like a party atmosphere going on around you, you know? party atmosphere yeah a deputy run up down the in their boats and drinking and having a good time. Did they party, dance, and have a good time at the death scene? What in the world is the matter with you? No, they didn't party. They were searching for one of their comrades. <sighs> I can't so, believe that you would bring up such stupid accusations, completely erroneous. These are accusations from several people who no, were there. No, no, no. People who no. witnessed it. No, 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 no. Again, written accounts. Ac produce the account or produce the witness. Within a couple hours, it just turned into sort of a carnival atmosphere. Joining the search, uh, Deputy Rod Kusick, a 16-year veteran of the department. The girls were pairing up with some of the guys, the uh, deputies, and uh, they had brought their swimming suits, and, and um, it just started to turn into... Um, a carnival. When Ken Mathis was elected sheriff in 1982, it was on a platform to clean up Mariposa County. One of the cases at the top of his list, to re-examine the disappearance of Deputy Sheriff Ron Van Meter. Two special investigators were brought in, and the case was reopened. Ray Jenkins, former police chief of nearby Merced College, was one. His report on Van Meter's death differed sharply with the original sheriff's version. The boating accident did not take place as described on their report. There were so many inaccurate statements. The witnesses were later contacted and denied making the statements the sheriff's office had on work. Ray Jenkins is a complete liar if you talk to him, but I don't believe you talked to him. I talked to him at length. No, I don't think so. Ray Jenkins also says he thinks this was a homicide. Well, he doesn't think it was an think accident. He whatever he wants. It wasn't. After more than 10 years underwater, when a drought dropped the level of the lake, Van Meter's body was recovered from Lake McClure late last year. It was weighted down with a fire extinguisher tangled in his clothing. 2020 has obtained this amateur home video shot of the recovery as divers throw the skeletal remains to shore. Based on the evidence, that here was a case where people had walked away from evidence, walked away from statements, walked away from witnesses, had totally, it was not a professional investigation. It looked like a cover-up. The complaints of crime also include an allegation of rape by one of the sheriff's top deputies. They basically said it was up to me. I could file a complaint and then they would have to investigate but, and arrest him, but he would be out of jail on bail and it would just probably wouldn't do any good. She came to your office. That's correct. She said she had been handcuffed, she had been beaten, and she had been raped. No. And according to this yeah. woman, she said that Why you Why don't you interview her? We will and have. No, you haven't. We have, and she says that she was told he'll be out on bail before you can get home. Absolutely a lie. So you didn't interview her and you didn't talk to her because she would not complain. The woman says she didn't sign a formal complaint because she received a visit from Sergeant Rod Sinclair. She also says she got in a car with one of your top people, Deputy Sinclair, and he said, if you don't get out of the county, we're going to lock you up as a mental case. Absolutely a lie. You go interview him. He still works for the department. We tried to discuss the case with Sinclair, but he declined. I understand what you folks do, and I appreciate the predicament you're in, okay? You're trying to draw a conclusion, okay? I've been advised by counsel not to speak other than what I've told you. 
In the court of Mariposa justice, the deputy was eventually fired for the rape complaint, but never charged or prosecuted. The victim, who passed two lie detector tests, fled town and would agree to be interviewed for this broadcast only in silhouette because she still fears the sheriff's department. Even after the boss hog was voted out, his legacy of law and order continued through his hand-picked deputies, including Sergeant Rod Sinclair. He was involved in a fatal traffic accident which infuriated federal lawmen who believed he should have been arrested for negligent homicide. It happened while the Queen of England was visiting Yosemite Park on a holiday. As the Queen's motorcade was making its way toward Mariposa, Deputy Sinclair was racing in from the opposite direction at a high rate of speed. Advance cars from the Secret Service were several miles ahead of the Queen's limousine. As he rounded a curve, Sinclair's car swerved across the center line and slammed head-on into the agent's car. Three Secret Service agents were killed. Sinclair was only slightly injured. He was uh, still pinned in the car when I got there. In fact, I was the first full-time officer on the, on the scene. What kind of shape was he in? Was he conscious? And... He was conscious and uh, talking, you know, when I walked up, he asked about his partner, and, but the first thing he says, well, buddy, I screwed up this time. State and federal investigations took months. The accident was blamed primarily on Sinclair, and lawsuits later revealed that Sinclair at the time was taking hundreds of heavy prescription narcotics monthly, including Percodan, a sleep inducer. Queen's accident was an international tragedy, okay? It took a toll on a lot of people, including myself. Sinclair refused to comment further on the accident, so we couldn't ask him about a bomb and automatic weapons found in the trunk of his car, or if he was driving under the influence of prescription drugs when three federal agents were killed. He was neither charged, fired, or suspended, but was later promoted to commander. For reform-minded sheriff Ken Mathis, the Queen's accident, as it became known, was just one in a series of nightmares. After Mathis defeated Page, he set about battling a county system which he saw as corrupt. For nearly three years, Mathis fought that system. Every move I made, uh, there were doors were shut in my face. And I was beginning to have very serious physical problems. I went to my doctor and uh, he told me that uh, I wasn't going to be long for this world. So I, I was forced to resign. But before he gave up his badge and gun, Mathis hired outside lawmen to help him clean up Mariposa. One was Orb Hatton, a 16-year veteran of the Modesto Police Department narcotic squad. He now owns a real estate company in Mariposa and raises horses. But he remembers a discovery he made just a few years ago when Mathis hired him to run an undercover drug investigation. I was told by informants that sheriffs, Mariposa County Sheriff's Office, cars would set at each end of the airstrip, the, the, the load would land, uh, would be offloaded into uh, uh, other vehicles, and those uh, patrol cars would escort those drugs into Yosemite Park. He made several buys from me in the bar downtown. And uh, the purchases he made there were so open that uh, he said one time he, he went in for a purchase and they walked right to the, the common refrigerator and got the, the dope out of the refrigerator and sold it to him. Right in the restaurant? Right in the restaurant. It's claimed that at one time there was so much cocaine done in that bar that you could take a sniff or a line right off the bar and they were taking uh, the drugs out of the refrigerators within that uh, building. Complete lie. I, I assume that you're... A well-informed individual. I'm trying so, to become informed. What does a good coke habit cost? I have no idea. I've never used it. Well, neither have I. But you can read about it in the papers and everywhere else. When you have no armed robberies, no burglaries to speak of, one or two small ones, how do you make enough money for that kind of habit? Can you answer me that? Selling drugs. Selling drugs to whom? Transporting drugs. Transporting where? Los Angeles, San Francisco, why would anybody, over to the National Park why where there's would plenty of money in the hotel. Why would anybody go to County to get to any of those places? Because you can land a plane here and you can distribute from here <laughs> if you want to. It's a very easy route from here I'm across so land. I'm so sorry you're so you. misinformed, but that's all. Hocus pocus. Locus pocus. No such thing ever happened. Grand juries, new sheriffs, undercover investigations, 
The people of Mariposa will tell you, not much has changed. Mariposa has a new sheriff now, Roger Matlock. He's known Page for years and says they occasionally talk, but claims he's an independent crime fighter. But in these parts, there are plenty of people who are convinced that Paul Page sits on his front porch and rocks and still runs things. Rumors and Indios get started and they just go on and on and on. They just keep building. One person hears it and the, by the time they tell it to somebody else, it's built way out of sight. Is this a conspiracy among your enemies? Absolutely, if, if uh, you want to call it that, but conspiracy against what? That, I've got nothing to hide. What are you going to, I mean, why are they going to conspire against me? I have nothing to hide. I'm clean. He's a marvel, Tom. I, I like the way he was unfazed by your proof that you had interviewed certain people. He just simply denied. True, Hugh, and certainly being misinformed is no crime. Uh, the bigger question is, how has this man gone so long without being the target of a grand jury investigation, the target of investigation by a district attorney, the target of a state investigation complaints about there, and federal law complaints against him? Nothing has ever worked out. And, 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 they have, probably not happens instead uh, the person there is pursued and, and assault in the county in Mariposa after they retire and that's been the pattern so far. It's quite amazing there was a time when people stonewalling used to seek plausible denial now it seems that uh, all you have to do is deny it doesn't have to be plausible. Seems to be good reason why he has that nickname the boss. The boss. Yeah. Thank you. Tom. Later would you call an overweight woman on sports and Angelo Stalas with the weather now, the Valley's number one newscast, Channel 30 Action News at 11. Wait, woman. Sports and Angelo Stalas with the weather. Now, the Valley's number one newscast, Channel 30 Action News at 11. Tonight on Action News at 11, the crop-munching white fly invades our valley. And how do you balance a dangerous career with a family? Part two of our series on women cops. No corruption. See, there's, there's no corruption in the sheriff's department. None. And what does Mariposa think about its reputation? Good evening. If you watched tonight's 2020 report on Mariposa, you know it didn't paint a pretty picture of the Foothill community. If you missed tonight's report, here's just a brief look at some of the things Tom Gerald investigated. Handcuffed to her bed and raped. These divers are recovering the body of a sheriff's deputy who vanished under mysterious circumstances 11 years ago. A bomb and automatic weapons were allegedly found in the trunk of a county patrol car that was to provide security for the Queen of England. And this undercover narcotics investigator says he found evidence the Mariposa County Airport was a closely guarded major distribution point for drug smugglers. Tonight's 2020 report brought national exposure to a small community in Central California. Steve Pickett is live in Mariposa where residents watch tonight's show. What do they think, Steve? Well, a lot of uh, opinions here, pro and con, you can imagine with, a, with an issue such as this, but no one really remembers, Rich, when the Mariposa has seen such an event like this, so much attention, there's pl plenty of media here, and, and a lot of focus on this, but it may be safe to say that all eyes were indeed on 2020 tonight, including a large group of folks inside this lounge tonight. Focus, focus. Fact or fiction? This group of Mariposa residents watched tonight's report closely, watched the allegations and charges of corruption they've heard before aired in front of a nation tonight. Many had opinions, starting with the wife of the drowned deputy sheriff, Robert Van Meter. I think it was presented pretty well, considering there's a lot to be put into it that is not able to be put on in one segment. Well, you hear a lot of this stuff, but you don't really know what's true and what isn't anymore, Steve. It's hard to tell. I think they did a very good job of covering it, and I think it, uh, we hope it'll bring somebody in. We've been hoping that for eight, ten years. This town is not any different than any other town in the state of California. We have crime, and we have good people. As you hear, uh, plenty of opinions here, several opinions on both sides of this issue. Uh, again, the sheriff, the former sheriff, being the main focus of that report tonight. Plenty of folks here that we talked with say something is wrong in this town, but proving it is the hard part. And uh, they hope some of those folks we talked with tonight, hopefully that this report tonight may head in that direction. Back to you, Rich. Steve, are they anticipating a, you know, a, a thorough investigation? 
there was no indication of that. That's one of the big question marks with all of this, that one of the things, more, more than anything, that will something concrete come from this? That's yet to be seen so far. All right. Thank you, Steve Pickett. In other news, a four-year-old Dinuba girl is fighting for her life tonight after a fire raced through her home this afternoon.